Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about the presidents of Texas, but before I do that, I want to remind you that um, where we left off was that Texas was in a war with Mexico. Um, Santa Ana had become the dictator or the ruler, and they didn't the people of Texas did not like that. And we ended that war at the Battle of San Jacinto, which was the battle that lasted 18 minutes. And a lot of our presidents that you're going to meet in this video fought at the Battle of San Jacinto. So the first guy I want to show you is David G. Burnett. He did not fight at the Battle of San Jacinto, but he was also not our real president. He was what's called an interim president. That means he was president in the meantime. So if you remember back to Washington on the Brazos, when Texas declared its independence from Mexico, they all signed the paper really fast and then they ran away. Um, while they were there, um, they also picked a president, an interim president, and an interim vice president. And they didn't spend a lot of time on it. They pretty much just said, who wants to do this? Let's go and left. So David G. Burnett, became the interim president. And we actually talked about the interim vice president yesterday a little bit when we talked about the flags. That was Lorenzo de Zavala. He was the interim vice president. So David G. Burnett basically was our president until we could have a real election and really vote on a president, which they did not have time to do in that situation. And David G. Burnett was probably really excited about this job because he was the baby of 14 kids. He was always trying to do big things like his older brothers and his dad. His dad had been a famous judge in the United States. One of his brothers wrote a really famous history book and his other brother worked in the United States government. So he was probably really excited when he got to be the interim president of Texas. He was from what I can read, and grumpy is an opinion word, but I kind of feel like he was grumpy when things didn't work out. Um, and he and Houston did not get along at all. In fact, later in his life, um, he wrote a whole book, a history book, um, about the Republic of Texas and all the terrible things that Sam Houston had done. Uh, the book was not published, and it was actually burned before he died. But um, you can tell from uh, different writings that they did not get along at all. But once the Battle of San Jacinto was over, David G. Burnett met with Santa Ana at, the, at Velasco, and they signed the Treaty of Velasco, making Texas its own country, the Republic of Texas. So when they had their very first election and they picked a president, who do you think they picked? Sam Houston. I would have too. He was the leader of the Texas Army. He had just won this great battle at San Jacinto. And you know a lot of good things about Sam Houston. Um, his main goal as president was to pay off money that Texas owed. He had very good relationships with the Native Americans, and he wanted to join the United States because he thought that would keep Texas safe. He really didn't think Texas should stay its own country. He felt like they should try to get adopted by the United States. Maribu Lamar was his vice president. Maribu Lamar was also a hero of San Jacinto. He was from Georgia. He loved to read like, and I mean like hundreds and hundreds of books. He wrote poems. Some of them were published in magazines and he loved to paint and ride horses. One of his good friends was James Fannin. And after Maribu Lamar's wife died, he came to Texas uh, to see his friend James Fannin and decided he might just wanna live there and um, he also thought he might want to help them with the Texas Revolution. So he went back to Georgia to get some things together. And on his way, he found out that his friend James Fannin had been killed at the massacre of Goliad. So he actually turned back around, came as fast as he could to Texas and fought in the Battle of San Jacinto. His, it is written that his quick thinking and bravery saved a lot of people's lives that day. So not only was Sam Houston a hero of the Battle of San Jacinto, so was Mary B. Lamar. So he became the vice president. According to the Texas Constitution, you could not be president of Texas two times in a row. So after Sam Houston's, Houston's first term as president, he had to not be president anymore. And so the next president, president number two of the Republic of Texas, was Maribu Lamar. 
Now, although um, he got along pretty good with Sam Houston, I always kind of think about them maybe writing poems together because we know they both like to write poems. Um, but his philosophy was very different. He did not want Texas to join the United States. He was more like of a dreamer in the sense um, that he wanted Texas to be this great nation going all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And he was very against Native Americans. He wanted them to get out so the Texans would have more room. He borrowed more money to try to make Texas more of a um, of a strong country. And he is actually called the father of Texas education. And that is because he helped start the first, some of the first colleges in Texas. And he promoted um, public education as well for all students in Texas. Um, he helped start the University of Texas and Texas A&M. His vice president was this guy, we've seen him before, David G. Burnett. Now, after Maribu Lamar was president, we have our third president, which is Sam Houston again. He tried to undo Lamar's ideas. You remember, he thought the opposite things from him. So when he was president again, he tried to kind of undo everything that Lamar had done and try to get us adopted by the United States again and all those things. Something also kind of big happened during his third presidency, and that's the Mir expedition. And I'm actually going to send you some things about that tomorrow because it's sort of a long story. Now, our last president was Anson Jones, and he was also at the Battle of San Jacinto. He was a doctor, and we've talked about in class how most doctors um, sort of are neutral during the battle. They'll, of course, help their own troops first. They're a part of the army helping their troops, but they also um, will help other injured people, too, that aren't on their side because they take an oath to help people if they are hurt. Um, however, Anson Jones did not want to be a doctor at the Battle of San Jacinto. He actually insisted that he not be listed as a doctor. He was a private in the army at the Battle of San Jacinto, and he did actually fight. Um, he also found Juan Almonte's journal after the Battle of San Jacinto, and that's really important because a lot of the things we know about the Battle of the Alamo come from Juan Almonte's journal. As the president of Texas, he called a convention that's a big meeting and everyone voted whether they wanted to be adopted by uh, the United States or, or not. And everyone voted they wanted to be um, adopted. And so he is called the architect of annexation. Annexation just means to adopt or add on. And he is sort of famous for um, declaring the Republic of Texas is no more. So during his presidency, we stopped being the Republic of Texas and we became the state of Texas as part of the United States. All right, that's all I have for you today. The next time I send a video, um, uh, it will be about the Mira expedition. And after that, we'll talk a little bit about the capitals, where our capitals were while we were our own country. Hope you all are staying well and safe. Love and miss you. Bye, guys.